All right, we're here with uh, Sheriff Lou Evangelitis and the Worcester County Sheriff's Office Winter Coat Drive is happening right now. Kicked off last Thursday. And thank you very much for coming in. This is something I really believe in because a lot of people can't afford, you know, winter clothing. And then especially these days where the heat costs are going up, electric costs are going up, it makes it even harder. Yes, Mike. So again, thank you for having me on. The coat drive is a very, very special uh, part of the year for all of us at the Worcester County Sheriff's Department and our Reserve Deputy Sheriff Association. Our goal is to meet the needs of people in the community when it comes to staying warm in the winter. And, you know, it sounds pretty simple, but it's not. And it's really important. And I think if I had to summarize what the coat drive means to myself and our department uh, is that we like to show the people in this community who need coats that this community cares. And it's that simple. We care about you. And a lot of us have been very lucky in our lives. We, have, we haven't had to have the indignity of being cold in the winter and not having... I know people that actually wear their winter coats in their homes. And as, you, as we talked about earlier, I mean, we got spiraling inflation right now, mm -hmm. costs going through the roof. Sometimes things have to get cut. And believe it or not, sometimes a new or a better winter coat is one of the first things to go. So we do see young people and adults with very minimal coats, no coats at all. Um, and that's just unacceptable. In a community like Worcester County, we were a very caring community. You know, we're not a, we're, we're, we have a lot of people that want to help each other. And our goal is to just bring those people together to help solve that problem. So we've been giving away coats for years. And the one thing I've noticed that I wasn't sure of when we started was that the need never goes away. You always think, well, if we just could give 2,000 coats out this year, we'll probably help in those people that need it. And then next year we get 2,500. And those are gone, you know, within a couple of days of deliveries too. And it's still going that way to the point where now we've got this. And if I can just, if you wouldn't mind, give you a quick history. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we started this coat drive, uh, really, it was very small when I got elected sheriff. We wanted to make it something special. And we did collection boxes. And we started collection boxes initially in North Worcester County, Fitchburg, Gardner area, Lemonster. And it spread very quickly because we put it out there. We were doing it. People said, we want to help. It was really organic in the sense that people wanted to help. So they did. So they started putting up collection boxes. Unum, for example, right downtown Worcester used to put up a collection box, as would the Green Dell Y and, and Spectrum News. Like all over, people would just say, give me a box. We want to donate coats. And we were up to 3,000 through 3,500 coats prior to COVID. And then when COVID hit, uh -huh. the idea of collection boxes became a little bit right. dicey. So I thought, well, we'll probably really have to suspend the coat drive. And then we had a partner come to us, make a donation of like $10,000 and said, it was also the Council for Aging and said, we want to partner with you to give coats out because there's still a need there. And I thought maybe we could cobble enough money together to buy 500 coats. That would be something. Before we knew it, Mike, we had enough money to buy 3,000 winter coats a couple of years ago, brand new ones. And we continued on that effort. Last night was the, or last week was the kickoff to get this once again kickstarted and going as we're doing. And we have so many donations and generosity right now. We're online to get over 4,000 winter coats. And we already have the schedule. We're starting uh, this week. And we are starting at the CAC in Gardner. I think it's going to be tomorrow. And we are going straight through the next two weeks. We have about 30 stops. The need is incredible. The, the, the people's appreciation is also very wonderful. And this year, we're going to have a chance to present those coats, whether it be to kids, high school, teenagers, and, and, and adults. All across Worcester County, you name the organization, we are probably bringing coats there. So what's what's the greatest need, like as far as like an no. age group, or, yeah. or what what do you guys need the most that people can focus in on? Right. Well, we've gotten a lot of great donations, and we're gonna be able to buy a lot of men's coats. So we're kind of focusing now on women's and teenagers and kids, particularly two coats, because we want to make sure we can meet all the needs. We we're so organized, and I'll give my team credit for this. They do the organization. But we are so organized that we get each organization to tell us what they need, and we pre-package the coats, bring them to them. So if they need, and I'm making this up, but giving you an idea, if we go to a certain organization and they say we need 62 kids' coats, we need uh, 29 men's coats and 47 women's coats, we try to bring that number to them. We try to have an understanding so we can figure out how many coats. And my team is amazing, Mike. They go out starting, starting in the summer when coats are cheaper, Right. Uh, and we yeah. go out and we start buying them, and we're still buying them. So, unfortunately, the more generosity we have, like our kickoff party last week, uh, that just makes more work for my team. They have to go out this weekend and the next weekend and buy more coats to keep them flowing. But it really is a special thing. So, uh, say I go out 
I buy a couple of new coats. Mm -hmm. uh, where could I bring those? Here you can bring those over area. to 240 Main Street. We okay. have a up second floor. We're just having people, if they want to drop them off, they can drop them off. So the gun parlor right there in Worcester, if you know what that oh, is, right off the uh, highway. Prescott Street. Yep, Prescott yeah, Street. They're, right, doing yeah. a, they, they're collecting new coats for us. If you're in the Worcester area, you can drop them off there. To let you know, this is a joint effort between the Worcester County Sheriff's Department and the Worcester County Reserve Deputy Sheriff's Association, which is our charity. So we take charitable donations, and they can be designated for coats, and we'll make sure that they're used for coats. But some people make donations that we can do for other things, too, to make donations to important causes in the county or help us support our senior picnic, which can cost thousands of dollars, and we want to make it free of charge for people, uh, or any other uh, things we do as a charitable organization. So we do accept the checks, and if you want to designate them for the coat drive, we'll make sure they're spent exactly on coats and we don't this is an organization with any real overhead you know that's why a lot of people love donating to us because if you give us a good example if you give us a hundred dollars we're going to go out and buy a hundred dollars worth of coats nice nice now is there a website everybody can go to you know or on their phone that they can uh, go to and get all the information or maybe make a, a monetary donation reserve deputy sheriff.com okay yep Excellent. We got so many of those, I kind of forget them. But if you're really confused and you can't figure it out, just look up the Worcester County Reserve Deputy Sheriff Association uh, and find a way to get to us, and we'll get back to you and make a donation, and we'd love to have your support. But it's a special day, and as we said at the kickoff, we have literally dozens of sponsors, from corporations to individuals. We have a Reserve Deputy Sheriff Board of Directors. All the people are so generous. I couldn't even begin to name the people because there's too many to name and the generosity is overwhelming. We're only talking about raising, you know, fifty to sixty, seventy thousand dollars. We're not we don't want this to become too big in the sense of hundreds of thousand dollars. We like to manage it, but with that money and people donating coats, we're able to meet the need of four thousand people this year. That's pretty incredible, if you yeah. ask me. For an organization that's not huge, we just try to serve the community in a good way and we do it by the generosity of this community. Um, so before you go, I want to ask about another thing. I have a friend, uh, Kelly Edmondson. She works for an organization called No Mutts Left Behind, mm -hmm. which is a great organization. It's a it's a, like a team of people who foster mm -hmm. uh, dogs in their homes. I that's where I got my dog. Mm -hmm. uh, it's such a great organization. I know you help them also too. Sure, right? We do. As a matter of fact, just to give you just a brief background, I, I'm a I have always got my dogs from shelters or from yeah. strays. So I mean, that's the only way I've ever had dogs. So when I get in to be a sheriff, I noticed that we have a narcotics detection and bloodhounds, but they were they were getting older and they were retiring. We didn't have the budget to bring in new dogs for the sheriff's department. So I thought of, why don't we see if we can get shelter dogs free of charge? We could train them because there's a Plymouth County Sheriff training program. And we've been able to now have two different shelter dog programs at the jail. One is where you have bring them in and train them to be narcotics detection uh, and or bloodhounds. Uh, some of those are coming from shelters. And the other is we partner with shelters to bring dogs to the jail to live with inmates. And while the inmates getting rehabilitated, the dogs are being rehabilitated. These are dogs that can't be adopted because they have slight behavioral issues. They come and spend 12 weeks with the inmates at our facility. These are our lowest security inmates. And these dogs, we have about 120 adoptions out of 120 dogs. They, they change the culture of the jail. It's a safer environment. The officers love having the dogs. The inmates bond with them. They change as people. At the end of the day, the dogs are all adopted. But then we also, we well, there's so many different dog stories, but I'll just talk about the nomads left behind. They're a, a near dear organization to us. Some folks on our board of directors know Kelly and the team, and we thought we got to help them. They, do, they bring dogs that really have tough situations yeah. into people's homes. They don't really have a centralized location. They're more like they help bring dogs to community homes where they can get the training and the help and then be adopted if they're not adopted by those homes. So we held a, an event fundraiser for them this year down on uh, down on Water Street as a way to raise funds to help them with their work because they're they're a low budget organization but they right. do God's work and we love them and I'm so what's your dog's name? Baby. Well, there you go. Yeah. So Baby came right from No Mutts Left Behind yep. and you know the organization. We try to help. I'll give you one last story quickly because sure. it's kind of pertinent to this conversation. Our very first shelter dog was called Nikita, and we adopted him one of my first years as sheriff about 10 years ago. And he became one of the most highly trained narcotics detection dogs in the country. And he was donated free of charge from Sterling Animal Shelter. We ran a story on him. It got picked up by the AP Press. It ran in over 3,000 newspapers across the country. And a national show called Shelter Me out of Los Angeles came to our jail. These dogs live with the family of one of the officers. 
So they're on call 24 seven, but they are home pets and they're just trained to work for us when we need them. So they come to work with the officer. Anyway, we started this program. It was picked up by so many papers. Shelter Me heard it. They came to us. They filmed us with a Los Angeles film crew for five days. And Nikita was one of only two dogs uh, put on that show nationally um, and became a bit of a celebrity. Uh, and it was a national PBS TV show called Shelter Me. Then Nikita became the hometown, the only non-person ever declared hometown hero by Worcester Magazine oh, nice. was Nikita for the work he did for the people of this county every day. Um, and he was, again, a shelter dog, proving the, how the good work the shelter dogs can do. Um, and unfortunately, the reason I'm telling you a story is Nikita just passed away last week. Oh. And that was a bit of a, a watershed moment for our department because that's when a lot of great things started happening with our dog programs. It all started with Nikita. And unfortunately, Nikita got sick and, and ultimately uh, passed away. But we were we let the community know and the outpouring of support for Nikita and our department was very touching. And unfortunately, but, you know, we still have many other dogs in our department right. and we'll continue and to it do that. Right? It did. It yeah. became. But Nikita was the poster the poster dog for yeah. uh, for all these things that good things that happened after. That's awesome. Well, uh, Sheriff Lou Evangelitis, thank you very much for taking the time today. I know you're a busy guy, but I just want to let people know about the coat drive. Mm -hmm. Good luck on that, and we'll get the word out there, and maybe we'll get I don't know eight thousand coats. It really feeds on itself. Goodwill breeds goodwill. I right. found that in this community, like you have. So it's a special time of year for us. We're excited to get them going. I. I can't wait to be be out there next few weeks just distributing from, I said, from starting in Gardner all the way through the Lemonster, Fitchburg, Worcester, Clinton, Webster, Southbridge, Milford, you name it, we'll be out there distributing coats, and the people are you know, grateful to have these coats. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time.